The Big East Men's Soccer Championship game is driven by Jeep. A picture-perfect day in our nation's capital as two teams riding momentum will be playing for the title. It is the two-seeded Georgetown Hoyas welcoming in the underdogs, the four-seeded Marquette Golden Eagles here at Shaw Field. Happy Championship Sunday, everybody, alongside former ACC Freshman of the Year, Jamie Watson. I'm John Fanta. And Jamie, we've got two teams that are red hot heading into a title tilt that should be fantastic. You're right, John, and two teams that took two very different paths to get here. Georgetown, very comfortable in their semifinal win here, but also for Marquette, well, they took the road a lot less traveled, two penalty shootouts to get here. Their team is battle-tested, tournament-tested right now, and they've earned their place in this final. The Providence Friars have one of the best defenses in Big East soccer, and Georgetown rolled through with four goals. Well, they made it look easy, to be quite honest, John. They got the start they needed early, a goal early in the 30th minute, and it continued from there in the 59th minute through Riley Strasser. They made it 2-0, and then Ethan Lochner gets a goal in the 80th minute, and then 33 seconds later, that's the goal that ices it right there. It makes it 4-0, an emphatic win, a statement win in the semifinal. Meanwhile, Marquette had to rally at Morrison Stadium, nonetheless. One of the hardest places to play in the entire Big East. They go down 1-0. Well, of course, Luca Purpose there to answer. Two minutes later, he gives them the goal that equalizes right away. And then from there, you could just sense the confidence building amongst Marquette. And it made it all the way to this epic shootout final. It makes for a magical showdown as here it is. The Golden Eagles advancing to their first Big East championship game since 2013. And these two coaches, Brian Weiss and Louis Bennett, have led the programs back to the championship game. Hoyas looking to repeat Golden Eagles in their first title game appearance in five years. But let's turn to Georgetown. What do you see out of Brian Weiss's starting 11? Well, he doesn't make any changes to the starting lineup. That one against Providence, for me, it starts up top. You'll hear these names a lot. Derek Dotson and Achara, those two lead the line. But then look at Dylan Nealis in the back. He will do a good job of anchoring this defense. The Big East Defender of the Year will have a big task today against Luca Perpa. That'll be a big matchup I'll be watching. And the Golden Eagles have the Big East Goalkeeper of the Year and Maurice Barraza, part of the 4-2-3-1. Well, Barraza's been fantastic over the season. He's made the saves constantly needed to get his team points, to get him to this point. He's been fantastic in the shootout. Look for him to have a big game. And then up top, Luca Perpa. We have him listed as a forward here. John, he can do both. He can play in the forward position. He can drop into the midfield, create an overload, find some space. He's very dynamic. He is who all things lead through in the attack for Marquette. If they want to win, he needs to have a big game. Let's welcome in the third member of our crew, Megan Caffrey. Thanks, John. You and Jamie mentioned how Marquette is on this Cinderella story-like run. You have to remember, they were chosen to finish sixth in the preseason coaches' poll. And I spoke with head coach Louis Bennett about midway through the season and he said his team hadn't found their resiliency yet they were up and down either losing by lot or scoring a bunch of goals like that 4-0 win over st john's however now marquette is playing in the big east championship game coming off of back-to-back -back penalty kick shootout wins and i asked coach bennett before where that resiliency came from and he said simply two games one of which was the last time in which they met Georgetown in which Marquette finished the last 58 minutes a man down and still played to a draw. John? In the 55-year history of Marquette men's soccer, they had played in a penalty kick shootout just once. It was in Conference USA in 2002. And to get to this championship game, Jamie, they've needed two penalty kick shootouts, a combined 220 minutes of soccer, and 21 rounds of penalty kicks. Seven of which, John, were all pressure because they went second in the shootout at Creighton, at Morrison Stadium. So that tells you a lot about the team, Louis Bennett Fields. He believes that there's a lot of confidence growing amongst the team. As Megan said, as the season has gone along, they've gotten better and better. They've done a very good job of growing with the season survive in advance they're in the final we're set for a good one today john we are off in the be football final picture perfect skies here at shaw field an absolutely beautiful day as the hoyas looking to defend their title successfully you were here a year ago xavier getting out to the early lead but georgetown so resilient well, Georgetown here at Shaw Field, very good on the year, as they always are. This year, 5-3 and 2 at home. Early start here for Marquette as they go forward. Awesome, 
This one played out, and it's a Golden Eagles corner in the opening seconds here. Brian Weiss in year 13, and he has taken Georgetown to 11 of the last 12 Big East tournaments, and now looking for three of four championships. Josh Cohen, Pittsburgh transfer. These two teams drew in the regular season. What are you most intrigued by here at the outset? Well, I think for Marquette, you've already seen Josh Cohen get on the ball a couple of times now. He's going to be instrumental. Connor Alba on this side will be just as important now. wide. Derek Dodson. One of six All Big East first team selections that you see on this field today. Tons of class being shown out on the field. On display, a perfect day for a final. You can't ask for much better. Two good footballing teams. John, very excited about this final. It could have the potential to open up and be a very attack-minded game. It's a goal kick for Giannis Nikopolidis. So we turn to our keys to the game. Well, I think for Georgetown, the, the key to the game is relying on their championship experience. For the seniors, this is their third time in four years being in a Big East Conference Final. They've won the other two. Look, when you're in this situation time and time again, you start to understand what it takes to win a final. But for Marquette, they cannot give away any cheap turnovers, especially in their own half. Louis Bennett's okay giving possession away in Georgetown's half, but he certainly doesn't want to give them 30, 40 yards ahead of the field on the other side of the midfield line with a cheap turnover that they can then attack through Dotson, through Achara. Zayat's in the middle kind of pulling the strings. It'll be very important that they're sharp on the ball and don't give anything easy to Georgetown. Alba feeds it off. Perpa unable to get a clean touch off. You'll notice this too. This is this is what Alba can do. He can be out wide one moment, then he can cut inside. A fantastic turn. He gets on that left. He finds Perpa. That's too much space. If you're Georgetown, if you're Brian Weiss, you cannot allow the left foot, the cultured, classy left foot of Luca Perpa to be 22 yards out with time and space to touch in front of him and have it go. Georgetown has to be tighter on him, certainly. Luca Perpa has been a machine. Five goals in his last seven matches. Here he is now with open space. Connor Alba. That one just wide. Inches wide. Quick, quick attack on the counter for Marquette. This is a really bright start for Marquette in the first couple of minutes. Alba again on the ball. You see the defender showing him to his right. He still finds a way to get in there. The ball falls fortuitously in the end to Sunison, who just tries to wrap his foot around it. There's not much power on it. Oh, excuse me. That's... um. That's not Sunasone, that's Josh Cohen tucking in. Josh Cohen, he goes for placement over power there, tries to wrap it around, and Nicopolitis was scrambling for that one. Marquette controlling possession here in the opening minutes of this Big East Men's Soccer Championship game. And the implications here, Georgetown, the top 20 in the RPI, they feel good about their NCAA tournament hopes regardless of the result today. They want to help their seeding, but Marquette in a must-win mode. Certainly, and that for them, the tournament starts today. Yes, it's great to win a Big East championship. Yes, you want to lift a trophy. Yes, that's great for the program. But if they want to make it into the tournament today, candidly, honestly, this is their route. It's going to be tough tomorrow when the selection committee gets together at 1 o'clock to make those decisions. And we'll talk more about this, John, at halftime. But it's very important for Marquette to win today because they don't have the RPI, the likes of George, or Georgetown, the likes of Creighton. So for them, this is their ticket to the tournament. The tournament starts for them today. And that's exactly why Coach Bennett does not like calling this a final. Because it's already started for them. This is It's a final for Georgetown. They're going to get into the tournament, most likely. But for Marquette, this is where it starts for them with their tournament. So I love that mentality. And you start to see some of the older guys, some of the seniors, Stefan Boom, we saw him a moment ago taking the throw and getting on the ball, building to the other side. They're going to need to have a good game for Marquette. Let's make a run. 
These are the two hottest teams in BU football. There it is, the Golden Eagles. They are unbeaten in five of their last six. Coach Bennett talked about the fact that he did not know his team's identity early in conference play up until that point. That's going to be important for them to get this win, and they're going to figure themselves out as they have this tournament. Adelitas, the freshman. This is a big opportunity for Giannis Nikopolidis from Athens, Greece. Very important as a freshman. Look, he's following in the footsteps of JT Marcinkowski, who's now with the San Jose Earthquakes. He was a freshman last year, had to fill those shoes. He's done remarkable in this season so far. He's done a very good job with seven shutouts on the year so far. Brian Weiss never saw Nikopolidis play. Nikopolidis was gauging interest when he was looking for a, a college to go to, and it just worked out. He was sending out letters to different schools, and Georgetown happened to be interested, and it all worked out. He must have come off of a good recommendation from somebody Brian Weiss trusts because he rolled with them as he has all season, and he has been very, very good this season. Top of the box, and a bullet, that's right. Off the foot of Jacob Montez, the sophomore. Well, Montez does a great job of finding that space in there to get inside. As it finds its way, Montez cuts in, tries to curl it around, much like we saw moments ago. Look, we've been raving about Nicopolitis at one end, Barasa on the other end, a very good goalkeeper himself. A moment ago, I said J.C. Mar Marcinkowski was a freshman. He was a junior, as he's now with the San Jose Earthquake. So, again, this was a big opportunity. Both goalkeepers, Barasa, the Big East goalkeeper of the year, Nicopolitis, somebody who certainly has the pedigree and the talent to be a contender for that next season and years beyond. It's a great showcase of two very good goalkeepers in today's matchup. So if we can get out here, unless they give us all that room, all right? Well done, well done. Get to listen in to Coach Bennett for a moment there. There he is just having a word with Boom, telling him to get forward if the opportunity presents itself. It's a hard foul. Big collision with Derek Dotson, holding the ball up well. Getting the worst end of that as the hold of play, but that's important. Something little like that from Dotson allows his team to get 20 yards further up the field. Now they can get everybody forward. Does a good job of finding it out of his feet. Then a nasty collision in the midfield. Sal Marone takes him down. Dotson earns the foul. This is the Big East. There's no shortage of physicality. Or love loss between these two teams. The game earlier in the season, Marquette, as Megan talked about in the pregame show, went down to 10 men, had to battle at Valley Fields, their home turf, just to get a result. Marquette going with a 4 2 3 1. I'll play the purple. Nicopolitis will just vacuum it up. Good overlapping run from Seagrass. Looked off in the end, but that's very important for the left back of Marquette to get forward as often as he can. Okay. The end of Georgetown's regular season was fascinating. They hosted St. John's at Cooper Field, which is the football field here at Georgetown, due to the amount of moisture at Shaw Field. And St. John's capitalized with the turf. They play on turf at Belson Stadium in Queens, and they won one nothing, which put Georgetown in a tough spot to clinch a bye in this tournament. What did the Hoyas do? They handed Creighton its first loss in Omaha the season in comeback fashion. Lochner, coming off a two-goal performance, earns a corner. Fantastic tackle in the end from Boom. Lochner gets one-on-one, -on -one, tries to go for speed around the corner. Boom, up to the task, does a wonderful job jockeying for position as he takes the touch. Stay stride for stride for him, and at the last second, leaves his feet. An important, timely tackle to concede a corner. Interesting look there, going short. They're, brought, they're bringing out a second forward now. Currently, Marquette only has one defender out there, so if it's a two-on-one, look for Georgetown to try to exploit that or maybe pull a second defender over to then create less numbers in the box, which they feel gives them a better chance to go get on the end of it. Kyle Zayats, the senior captain. 
scored the opening goal in Georgetown's 4-0 semifinal win over Providence. Just look what it means to the Hoyas. A fantastic ball in from Zions. McDonough rises up above. The senior playing in the third, third Big East final of his career gives his team the start they could only dream of. What a finish. Towering header gets up and above his first goal of the season, and you couldn't ask for a better time. Just over 10 minutes into the Big East final here at home at Shaw Field, that's exactly what we talked about in the pregame. Your seniors who have been here, it was the key to the game, his third Big East final, and none other than Brendan McDonough gets above on a corner. A wonderful set piece from Zayats makes it 1-0. Brian Weiss has said Brendan McDonough is the key to the wall. That four-man back line for the Hoyas. How fitting is it that the senior at this time comes up big on the offensive end. And especially 11 minutes in, if we're being honest, John, that's been dominated by Marquette, but the set piece, the second in a row, it's a wonderful ball in from Zayetz. Barasa can't come out for it. McDonough rises up above, snaps the header down. It's a powerful header. Nobody's getting on the end of it. The Marquette defender on the goalpost can't reach it. Barasa's scrambling for it. It's a wonderful header, a dream start here at home. Now, what is Marquette's response to this? What do they do? Because for the first 10 minutes, they've looked very sharp. They've gotten their opportunities going forward. This was against the run of play a little bit. Now they find themselves down on the road 1-0. What is the response from Louis Bennett and his team? Golden Eagles had to rally at Creighton. They're just coming off a comeback performance. But this is a different monster today. And in that matchup, Luca Burpa scored two minutes later after that goal. So it was a very quick response. So the heads didn't have very much time to hang. You didn't start to feel the added pressure of being down on the road. So look for Marquette to want to try to get a similar type response very quickly. Hey, go, 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 go. How do you balance that adjustment period with also trying not to do too much? Well, it's a good question, and Passarelli does a good job of winning the foul with Achara. It's something simple as getting on the ball, a quick start going forward again, not letting four, five, six, ten, seven minutes, ten minutes tick on before you get your next opportunity. They need to get purple on the ball, try to get Sunason involved a little bit more in those outside plays of Cohn and Alba get them forward and get them back to what they were doing that's so successful in the first opening minutes. Brendan McDonough with his first goal of the season. Kyle Zayetz, his seventh assist of the year as here's Purpa. Good collective pressure. Boom on the ball now. But for Marquette, if they're going to go, Louis Bennett wants his team to go in numbers, in waves. They're going to high press at times. They're going to go through a lot through Alba and Cohen out wide, providing that pressure to try to get turnovers and try to play higher up the field through that pressure. Ball out wide now. Marquette is attacked down the left side. Wagner feeds it in right into the hands of Nicopolitis. Yeah, safe hands from Nicopolitis. That cross got away from him in the end. There was a couple of numbers getting forward. I like seeing three and four players from Marquette getting in the box. That's good. They're just going to need to get that service a little bit sharper, more directed to their center forwards or the deep runs from the midfield position. The Hoyas unbeaten in eight of their last nine matches until this point. And now here's Achara. Six goals on the season. Whistle on the point is and the official like a talking to. 
A very good job. Alba turns in. Mark Catalistic will have a word with Zayats. Alba does a good job. He takes that touch across the path of Zayats. So Zayats either has to bring him down, draw the foul, which is now, I believe, a second one already. He's getting a talking to from the official, or he has to let him go. He chooses the foul, and now that's another one to add on. These things start to set up, and the referees are going to look for some sort of persistent infringement on the players who are getting fouled constantly, like Alba, like Purple. Chara racing for it. Physicality down the left side. Boy is looking for quick insurance. Good switch. It's really something the opening two minutes of this one. Marquette aggressive pressing forward. Georgetown doesn't seem phased whatsoever. They've possessed it really ever since. Well, that's why it was the key to the game, relying on the championship experience. And it showed they were able to weather the storm. They got their opportunity and took it. Now perhaps another. Still in a dangerous spot. It's a strike that was blocked. Purpa. Really good job at Georgetown. As they got in and around the top of the 18, they didn't panic. They didn't take the first option. They waited till an opportunity presented itself. Marquette had to weather that, got in front of it, blocked the shot. Now it goes out. We get a throw in from Segrist. The difference, Brendan McDonough. Goal in the 11th minute. Man! Man! On, fed in, and it's a corner. Much like we saw with Marquette at the other end, other end. Georgetown got three players in the box. Montez went to cross that end. Again, this is where they scored in the 11th minute. You just mentioned, John, set pieces for them. Zayat's on the ball, does a wonderful job with his right foot, picking out who he wants to. McDonough was the target last time. Let's see if they go back to him again. Watch him, watch him, watch him. Zayat's a flare. What? He's trying to pick me there, Luca. Just take him off. And the Hoyas just settle right back in and we'll look to rev it up. Great job of keeping possession by Zayats. Here's Achara. So much speed. We Bennett said that was a concern. Zayats left to the cage. So much speed, but so much strength. His ability to hold the ball up, it's complementative with Derek Dotson. He does a great job. And for Brian Weiss, what a plethora of options you have from Machara. And you start to see the two-seed overall, as we mentioned earlier. They got the bye. They did so well against Providence here at home. 6-2-1 and one all season here when these two teams played earlier in the year. A 0-0 tie, and we talked about it earlier. 149 career wins here at Georgetown. Can't think of a better time to pick up 150 if you're Brian Weiss, can you, John? You're absolutely right. And how about the recent success of this program, especially Coach Weiss was talking to us about this senior class. They are the most decorated already in program history with two Big East titles. And playing in a third today <laughs> in four years. That's unheard of. I mean, it's fantastic. It speaks to the quality of players he's brought in and the leadership they presented in the moments when they're the biggest. He said to us, the game will present moments. Can you win those moments? McDonough did that in the 11th minute. Boy is putting numbers forward again. Ball out wide. Lasered in. Marquette just trying to get it out of there. Lochner, the senior, and Achara, just a little bit outside of his reach. When this is where you want your senior goalkeeper, Luis Barraza, to do exactly what he's doing, put his foot on the ball, let everyone get forward, because right now Marquette is not doing a good enough job of winning the second ball, and the spacing is off in the middle of the field, and Zayats in particular is doing a very good job of exploiting that for Georgetown. Oh, 
So unlike Wednesday night in Omaha, we do not see a quick response from Marquette where they scored just seconds after Creighton took the lead. How do you navigate your way through? Well, they face different forms of adversity in this tournament, haven't they? In several different ways, different different challenges have approached them throughout this, so they've had to do a good job of fighting through that. This is another one. You're in the final, you're on the road, in a game you must win to make the tournament. It's important to see how they can respond since they didn't get that quick equalizer that they would have liked to. Segrist, beautiful move. Patrick Segrist off to Purple. Georgetown stopping that one. Good idea, just couldn't execute it with the one-two. You saw Segrist open up his body, look as though he's gonna cross it with his left. He sends the de reigning Big East Defender of the Year, Dylan Nealis, flying by him, he does a good job, and he tries to do a little one-two. Good recovery from Nealis as he's beat the first time. He doesn't put his head down. The senior defender, or junior defender, covers back in, gets into the right spot, and makes a vital intervention. Georgetown goal scoring has never been a problem for them averaging 1.67 goals a game we talked about Dotson and Achara in the opening nine goals six goals respectively on the season and a quick start looking for more here Lochner was double teamed Ethan Lochner a little bit after is there as well John as we talked about Lochner two goals in the, in the matchup against Providence. Quick succession, he loves to be able to stay out wide and then cut in as the focus is on Achara and on Dotson from that wide position. Three goals, four assists on the season. It's balanced, he can create, he can score himself. And he didn't appreciate Boom leaving a little one lead for him there after that, did he? Great to have you with us on FS2 for the Big East Men's Soccer Final. Two seated Georgetown Hoyas to defend their title and repeat right here at Shaw Field. Marquette, what a run. Fourth seed in this tournament, first title game for them since 2013 when they won it in the first year of the reconfigured Big East. Let's play that ball out. And the flag up, offsides called. Let's head back down to Megan Caffrey. Well, John, on that last possession that Marquette had, head coach Louis Bennett was yelling to his team, and he was doing it even before in their last couple of possessions, to be tighter and squeeze in, looking for some more opportunities that way. John? It's interesting to see how they're schematically going about it. What do you see out of that? Well, I think Megan's absolutely right from what she's hearing down the sideline. She's the eyes and the ears down there. And we're hearing Louis Bennett say, tighter squeeze. It goes back to what we were talking about moments ago. There's too much space in the middle for Georgetown to operate, to really start to dictate the pace of the game. That's where Marquette was at their best when they were tighter pressing. If they get back to it, that's when they'll find more success. Well done, Josh. A corner for the Golden Eagles. Perhaps this is their opportunity. Better from Josh Cohn. Much better from Josh Cohn to be able to win that corner. Going at Nealis again. That's a very good battle to keep an eye on. Josh Cohn spent the summer with IMG Academy of the PDL. Nicopolidis locks it up. Fantastic goalkeeping. Josh Cohn hangs this one up there. Nico Politas knows he's going to get some contact from Passarelli. He stays big, sure hands. Look, from the freshman, those kind of saves are very important. That'll get him into the rhythm of the game quicker than anything else. A little bit of contact, a good show of safe hands in that moment when your team needs you inches from the goal line. That's a big save for the freshman. How about his points? I mean, what can you say about it? Yeah, he's done such a good job. 
the youngster's done a really, really good job of integrating himself, coming over to a new country, a new place. He does a great job of being able to just assert himself right away and get that confidence of the group in front of him. He talks so much about the senior leadership and the fact they've been in three of the last four Big East finals. He comes in and he's the goalkeeper, the one you need the most confidence in playing in a final, and he makes a couple of big saves for you early on. That'll just make his team go from strength to strength. Now the Hoya is countering. This will be a goal kick for Barraza, but going back to Nicopolitis, it's all in the family, right? His father, Antonis, is the head coach of the U-21 Greek national team, and he's considered the most successful Greek goalkeeper of all time. His dad, not Giannis yet. He's still got a little bit of ways to go to try to eclipse that, but some big shoes to fill. <laughs> and it's definitely in the bloodline. Achara, Barraza, that's the Big East goalkeeper of the year. Stands his ground, doesn't overcommit. Achara bearing down on him. He's going to get to it first. A wonderful through ball, great weight on it. Achara wins the race. But again, Barasa doesn't give anything away. He closes down the angle and does a great job of making a big intervention at the last moment. The awareness of Barasa being able to see the play develop, to realize the ball's going to get through and that Achara is going to win the race, to not overcommit, to not give a foul away. That's the little intangibles he brings to the table. That's why he's part of the big, he was the Big East goalkeeper of the year. His soccer IQ of knowing this isn't just a moment to go crazy and go flying out at the feet of Achara because Achara can easily win a penalty in that situation. He stays big. That's what makes him such a very good goalkeeper within this league and quite frankly in the entire country. Barraza is also a part of the RSL Academy. Real Salt Lake, look, eight saves the other night against Creighton, but most of those were because he put himself in the right position. When we talk to head coach Louis Bennett, he's the kind of goalkeeper that has won his team points throughout the season that got them the four seed. Were they able to host that match against Xavier because he made some very big saves at some very big points in the year. He's had a fantastic career, and what a way to cap it off today in the Big East Final. You know a thing or two about Real Salt Lake, drafted by them. That was uh, that was home at one point, certainly. That was a, uh, a very good team to be a part of. But but also Real Salt Lake has produced a wonderful academy program in Arizona, where he comes from. He's trained with Real Salt Lake in the first team there. So Luis Barraza has a, a great resume and a great pedigree early on in his professional career that he's clearly shown as a senior that's led him here today. RSL has had a lot of success developing keepers through the years. Well, also, Barraza is very, very good with his feet, a lot like Nick Romando, the current goalkeeper, former national team goalkeeper, but one of the most decorated goalkeepers, could choose to fill. Their corner. If he gets there, if he gets that to that point where Real Salt Lake take, take him in, but it's very similar to what they have now. What do you think is the biggest key to getting there? Well, I mean, I think it's performances in days like today. You get to the Big East final. It's not by chance. It's not by coincidence. These are two very good teams that have fought their way to be here. And there are a lot of guys on today's game. Look, this game, Fox Sports 2, nationally televised. Any coach, any scout can sit on the comfort of their couch and watch this game. And the players know that. They are aware that. This is a showcase for them, for their talents that they've worked so hard to amass and occur over their career. But now, can you put it together on the biggest stage in a big moment? Guys like Madonna getting forward. Does that show a coach, hey, look, you get up, you win a big header 11 minutes in as a senior on your home turf. I mean, that's a big moment in the game. But also, too, you can't just crumble under the pressure, John. That's what a lot of players sometimes tend to do in these moments. You find out a lot about these players, both physically and mentally. And a foul on the Golden Eagles. Georgetown, a free kick from distance. Brian Weiss loves what they can do in the air. Mark Katalesic, Ian Gutt, Randy Von Steuben, our officials this afternoon at Shaw Field. Mark's a referee with a ton of experience, a referee worthy of being in the final here. It's a very good one. Look for him to keep tight control of the game and not let it get away from him. Zayats. Dotson. And the six. And it's called on the Hoyas. A shove from Nealis. 
Oh, and Barraza, as much as we've just sang his praises, a moment ago, a little bit of indecision. Do I come? Do I not come? And if Nealis doesn't commit that foul, he's going to have a 50-50 opportunity from the top of the six. Ultimately, it is a foul. But as Dotson won that first header and Nealis came on to crash on for the second ball, Barraza came and then he got back on his line. You can't hesitate in that moment because that's where you get yourself out of position. Golden Eagles throwing now for Cohen. Cohen doing everything he can. He's fouled. Just a smart play. A very good spot to win a foul deep in Georgetown's territory. He chases down the first one. He's agile on his feet. He's mobile. He's dropping the soldier. And Zayats doesn't need to commit that foul. You don't want your captain giving away that foul, that free kick there. As a senior, that's not a foul he should be giving away because this is a dangerous spot for Marquette to get their big guys forward. Purpa is at the top of the box as well. Keep an eye on Pastorelli, number 29. Will be a corner. Hey, go, go, go. No, leaning towards the near post. Owen can play it short. And he does. Now a laser in. Offsides. So looks like we'll be getting our first substitution. So as Josh Cohen takes a touch and it gets set, he comes back from an offside position because nobody is on the goalpost for Georgetown. Everyone had stepped forward. Very astute defending from the Georgetown defenders on the goalpost. Take a step off as he plays it. He is the player that's furthest on the field. That's why he's called offside there. It's got to be smarter. It's good awareness from the defense to step up and make him offside. But Josh Cohen has to see that and then tell whoever he's through in the short corner with, you take it, I'm off. Brian Weiss coming over to Matt Letter. Should be checking in momentarily, the graduate student. McDonough with a feed. See McDonough from the back, and he scored the first goal. First of the season for the senior. What a time for it in the 11th minute. Big East Championship on the line this afternoon. for Marquette. Louis Bennett was raving about the way his senior class has held this team together. One thing I'm looking at for Marquette is can Luca per Perpa get on the ball more? He's kind of faded out in the last few minutes of the game. We haven't said his name enough for Marquette to be successful. We talked about him in the open, John. We said if Marquette was going to have success, it was going to be because Purpa orchestrated it. So far, he's had flashes, he's had moments, but he hasn't consistently put it together in this first half. Tough touch for Alzarelli. Now we get the substitutions. Martin Alba checking in for Marquette. A seasoned redshirt senior and a captain. And then Matt Letter in the midfield. Riley Strassner, the forward, coming on. 
That's going to be a few changes here now. And substitutions aren't something these coaches like to do a ton of. They like to be more calculated. It's more quality over quantity for both Louis Bennett of Marquette, Brian Weiss of Georgetown. So to see Achara come off right now, he hasn't quite made that impact yet so far in this game. Now, that's not to say he can't. He certainly has that ability to do that. But then on the other side, Marquette looking to make their change, bring in Martin Alba, who when we talked to Louis Bennett, he had said he was one of those guys that maybe could have started today, maybe not. Now he gets a chance to make his impact in the final 10 minutes of the first half, coming on for Salmeron. And this sub becomes even more important for Marquette because they have played 200 in 20 minutes like you mentioned earlier it's very important or 210 minutes excuse me they've done a lot of playing in the last week 21 rounds of penalties exhausted physically mentally it's survive and advance in this tournament a few key subs today by Louis Bennett could be the difference for his side he only moved in two reserves against Creighton that says it all this team's just riding the adrenaline rush here come the Hoyas Barraza's there Really good defending again. Boom stays on his feet, does a very good job. Matt Letter, very good assertion into the game right away to go one-on-one, -on -one, but Boom does a very good job of staying on his feet, not biting on the fake. A turnover there, and Barraza eats it up. Nearly caused a threatening situation there for the Golden Eagles. We're looking for an answer to the 11th minute strike. McDonough getting on the board. Let's go down with him. Burpa was just out of his reach. So final eight minutes and change of this first half. Marquette. Goes back to the bench. Diego Nunez, the senior. For Georgetown. Foster McCune, the sophomore. Ryan Weiss loved what he brought off the bench. The semifinal win over Providence as Sunasan comes off for Nunez. Both coaches, as they've seen the game unfold in the first half, trying to tactically make their change to give their teams each the late push. For me, you mentioned Foster McCune coming in. He was the first up off the bench against Creighton. He does a good job of coming in, keeping the tempo high, but Diego Nunez on the flip side, coming off for Sunason, he does a good job of providing something a little different, and we might see the game's first yellow card. Mark Kadalesic. With the card there. Yeah, he does a good job, Mark Kadalesic, as we talked about earlier, keeping the game in check, Derek Dawson takes a hard foul early on in the buildup to that attack. It was late, it was cynical in nature. It's definitely worthy of a yellow card to number 20 for Marquette. That's a big moment early on for Leo Villa to get that card as one of the center backs, one of the most physical players. Now he's on a yellow card. How does that change his game now sitting on a yellow card? Wait, interesting to see, but keep an eye on that. One of the center backs for Marquette, the physical battle with Dawson and Achara sitting on a yellow and Villa. Villa with one of the penalty kick game winners in this run of consecutive shootout victories for Marquette. Golden Eagles in transition now. Alba cut off by the Hoyas. And it's Sean O'Hearn dashing in. Tremendous recovery from O'Hearn. Got into the foot race with Alba, did a good job using his body shaping his run to make the tackle at the last moment and then he ultimately wins a throw on himself. <laughs> O'Hearn, just a sophomore. But again, a sophomore who's now playing in his second consecutive Big East final. That's a lot, a lot to take on early on in your career, but that's a vital experience as a late tackle there for Marquette. That letter coming in off the bench just moments ago. Nifty move. 
Marquette defending it successfully. O'Hearn. Barraza. Taken down. His hand was fucking up. He, was he went airborne. And Ahoya is still down. Fortunately for Marquette, the Big East goalkeeper of the year appears to be okay. Yeah, just an incredibly difficult challenge going into it, knowing that you're going to take the brunt of this. Sean O'Hearn with a fantastic step. He hangs this up there. Foster McCune comes flying in. I don't think there's any really bad intention to go there. Barraza has the right to that. He goes in for it strong, confidently. He rides the challenge from McCune, who was trying to get out of the way of it. You could tell he pulled out of the challenge. Nonetheless, he takes the full brunt of Barraza's job of coming in and taking that, making the six-yard box his. That's good goalkeeping. La Hoya is banging on the door again, already with a 1-0 lead. Just five minutes left in this first stanza coming up at the half. We'll preview the NCAA tournament. But Luis Barraza, tough as nails. More on the Big East goalkeeper of the year. Here's Megan. Thanks, John. Well, Jamie was even mentioning a little bit earlier about Luis making those big saves. And we talked to head coach Louis Bennett about that a little bit earlier. And he said the key of a go good goalkeeper is that he's going to make those saves that you don't think that he could make. And Luis has made those this season, especially against Butler and Xavier. And what's more, coach called him a leader. And he said he leads not only from his talent, but his work ethic. And you can see it. he's going to be graduating in three and a half years, John. The takedown away from the ball. Stefan Bum hit the the grass and Matt Letter upset with Mark Catalesic. Yeah, look, there was one just moments before where O'Hearn committed a foul off the ball. So he's now keeping his eye on Mark Catalescas to see if that happens again. It's another one where as the ball starts to build, Matt Letter. I don't know if he really initiates as much contact as he does as the other as Devin Bohm does. And and I think Bohm might have gotten away with one there because I don't think that's certainly a foul on letter as much as it is on Bohm. The senior with a seasoned job there of creating an opportunity for the Golden Eagles. And now another opportunity here. Cohen is fouled, and so now Marquette. Another chance for them to do something. Nifty little play, setting it up a little two-man game, touches it through, goes by, letter has to drag him down, or he gives away a golden opportunity. So another set piece for Marquette. Luca Purpa, five goals in his last seven matches. Oh boy, that was dangerous. And it's a Golden Eagles corner as they are knocking now. Well, you can see what Burpa was doing. He tries to curl that in with pace as it goes through. A quick little dummy. It can go anywhere once it makes it across the box. Dylan Neal is a little fortunate that it bounces up. It almost has turned into his own goal. Little hearts and mouth moments for Georgetown. This is all still off the back of that Bohm challenge on letter. So they haven't even left the defensive third yet for Georgetown on a foul they never even committed. Burpa. And it's spun away by the Hoyas. A collected deep breath from the capacity crowd here at Shaw Field in our nation's capital. How confident Luis Braza is on the field. 45 yards outside of his goal. Conley passes it by. Louis Bennett told us earlier this week a wounded dog we're the underdogs and golden eagles are trying to play that role here again today facing a one nil deficit but they haven't lacked the chances jamie well oh, here's another one that builds the two i just i love the simplicity of that saying keep in mind we are underdogs not wounded dogs we're not in here just trying to trickle our way through here we're a bunch of injuries we're just happy to be here that's not what marquette's mentality and for Nicolopoulos, it is a very, very big task as a freshman to weather the storm that Marquette can create. They're not here by accident. The freshman goalkeeper doing a good job now of just trying to see out the final 90 seconds of this half. 
I think this has been a very even first half so far. The only difference is that Georgetown took their opportunity when it presented itself. They won the moment when the moment presented itself, like Brian Weiss told us that he was hoping his team would do, and that's clearly been the difference in this half. Nunez was on there. Nunez put a great run in. He just got looked off the last minute. They play it to Barraza. Luckily, he gets a clean touch. Boy is pressing high. They win a corner as a result. Oh boy, a big mistake in the back. A square ball across your own 18. And there's a little bit here, smart play by Passarelli. He gets in the way of Letter. Letter's not able to go cleanly through on goal because Passarelli takes a look over his shoulder. And as a, any good center back would do, he just throws Letter off balance. And Barasa comes out again, time and time again, reading the game. He does a very good job of coming out and making a big save. One last opportunity. Will be another corner here. Final 10 seconds of this first half. Hoyas looking for what would be a backbreaker. Marquette able to survive, but down 1 0 in this Big East final at the break. I think that this half really played out the way we thought it to. Marquette having to weather some storms at times through Georgetown. And I think Marquette did a very good job of asserting themselves going forward. We knew this was going to be an open game at 1-0 right now. I think it's very important that Marquette collects themselves and figure out how to recreate that first couple of minutes that they had because it was such a bright start. Megan Caffrey's with Georgetown head coach Brian Weeks. Thank you, John. Coach, back-to-back -back set pieces in the first tap on that second one Brendan McDonough was able to head it in what was the difference in that corner kick well, it's just a good serve and a good header I mean um, uh, Kyle's been serving really good set pieces for us all year so it's not too big of a surprise um, you know but uh, to be fair it's a good thing we got it because I think I think Marquette was a better team in the first half than us I think they were causing a lot of problems we're going up our right side like no problem and and uh, you know it's it's a it's a heck of a game we got to sort out here how are you going to maintain this offensive possession in the second half well I think we got to get it first I mean maintaining is very generous of you thank you for saying that I think we have to just do a lot better job our our activity level picking up first and second balls I think they're first to most of those things and 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 we're defending a lot as a result but we just have to be a little bit crisper uh, we have to get the game in their half and and just be a little bit more uh, deliberate with the ball and 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 uh, patient in a funny way when we get it Thank you very much, Coach. All right, thanks. John? Georgetown is 6-1 and one this season when they lead at the half. Brendan McDonough, an 11th goal. And a huge one for Georgetown to make it 1-0 at the break in the Big East Men's Soccer Championship game. The playoffs. Dig deeper. Get louder. To get to the top. You got to go all the way up. Don't miss the Audi 2018 MLS Cup playoffs tonight at 7.30 Eastern on FS1. Indiana. In the end zone. Touchdown. Michigan. Look at the speed. Saturday on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. attempt to talk you out of your current car. A test drive will do the talking for us. The Volkswagen Drive to Decide event. Get a Volkswagen with America's best six-year, 72,000-mile limited warranty. Get a $1,000 bonus on select 2019 Jetta and 2018 Tiguan and Atlas 2.0T models. Today's Best Western rewards you in a flash. Get a free night fast with points that never expire at over 4,200 hotels worldwide. And get double rewards points on every stay. Book now at bestwestern.com.
make watching your favorite sport even better? All you have to do is click with the new Fox Sports app. Now you can stream every game from anywhere you are. It's your personal nerve center for up-to-the-minute scores and stats. Get real-time updates on your favorite teams. Plus, the latest from MLB, college football, and the NFL. All at your fingertips. The new Fox Sports app. Now with live streaming. Download it from the App Store today. This is your wake-up call. All right, now we got some. This is what happens when game... We're diva. We're extra. ...recognizes game. So we're here to Brock Eisweather, Tom Savage, back to Eisweather, and Savage and Sean Watson. What? These guys sleep and eat everything sports. I'm glad you're on my team. Maybe it's just an obsession. Does LeBron know that you're obsessed with him? <laughs> first things first. Weekday mornings on FS1. It is a beautiful autumn afternoon here in the Big East Men's Soccer Championship game being played in our nation's capital. Georgetown University, the host, as we welcome you back to the final. Hoyas up 1-0 on four-seeded Marquette. And Jamie Watson, John Fanta here with you. Jamie, Megan Caffrey just talked to Brian Weiss, and he felt like Marquette actually maintained things throughout the first half better than his team. What did you see? Yeah, I would think that was a, a very cautious way of looking at his team's performance. He wasn't overexcited at the fact that we're leading 1-0. He actually thought for moments and spells of that first half, Marquette was the better team. So it'll be interesting to see what he says to his team, how they adapt to that team talk, because he clearly isn't 100% pleased, and I don't think he's 100% comfortable right now with how the game sits. At the end of the day, his team's up 1-0, and let's see how they got here, as Brendan McDonough was the difference, but a flurry of shots early. Yeah, early the game started with a lot of chances, a lot of half turns, a couple chances going wide, just one or two feet wide of the post, some physical play certainly, as we expected, but it all led to this in the 11th minute. Kyle Zayats with a wonderful fall in. Brendan McDonough, your senior captain, does a fantastic job rising over everybody, snaps the header down. That's the difference right now. 1-0, that goal in the 11th minute. First half stats driven by Jeep, and for Zayats, his seventh assist. McDonough, what a time for his first goal of the season. Uh, he couldn't pick a better time, but I think the half was a little bit more even than the stats may say. 6-3, to three, shots on goal 2-0 for Georgetown. Foul 6-8. This game was actually very back and forth, and it could have been either team that took the first moment. It would just happen to be Georgetown in the 11th minute that did that through McDonough. The winner of this one gets the automatic berth to the 48-team NCAA Men's Soccer Championship. We will preview the tournament after these messages on FS2. In the history of Earth, we have plenty of evidence of things going wrong. If we go to Mars, you don't want any surprises. There's a contagion going through the Lucan Con. What's wrong with my baby? Mars. New season tomorrow at 9 on National Geographic. The Lenovo face off with Michigan in a rematch of last year's national championship. Wednesday at 6 Eastern on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. This is a game changer. No scrub deck wash. Game changer. Game changer? Game changer. The moment you take staining to the next level. Buy one gallon Pink Plus primer cans and get one half off via rebate. This is a large three topping pizza from Domino's. You can carry one out for $7.99 every day. This is a three topping handmade pan pizza from Domino's. And now you can also carry one out for $7.99 every day. This is a logo from Domino's and this is the end of the commercial from Domino's. Just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University. Be the difference. 
This is your wake-up call. All right, now we got some. This is what happens when game... We're diva. We're extra. ...recognizes game. The Warrior, the Brock Osweiler, Tom Savage, Back to Osweiler, and Savage, and Sean Watson. What? These guys sleep and eat everything sports. I'm glad you're on my team. Maybe it's just an obsession. Does LeBron know that you're obsessed with him? First things first. Weekday mornings on FS1. Stare danger straight in the eyes, barely even blink. 10,000 plus horsepower. Expect the unexpected. Be ready for anything. These cars are pretty unpredictable. This race car will not ever be. You don't want to get hurt? Don't get in. RA. Countdown to the championship. Auto Club Finals. Today at 4 Eastern on FS1. What a season in Big East men's soccer. And it all comes to an end today in BE football. Georgetown up 1-0 on Marquette at the half. As we take a look at this season in BE football. And it's hard to believe that the Creighton Blue Jays would run the table until the regular season finale when they fell to Georgetown. They are not in this final. And as we look at this graphic, the important thing to note is this is how the top four teams in the Big East played out over the regular season. But take a look at the RPI. Creighton sitting at 33 right now. This is basically the strength of the schedule. So because Creighton is not in the final, because they are kind of right on that bubble of teams that are looking to get a bid into the final, they're watching at home wondering, do they get in? Because the selection is tomorrow, but on the flip side, a team like Marquette sitting at 88 in the RPI, they know if they don't win today, most likely they don't get into the tournament. Brian Weiss and Louis Bennett both echoed the success of Elmar Bolowich at Creighton, and they said it would be a crime if the Blue Jays are left out of the NCAA tournament. Absolutely. They sang the praises. And if Marquette wins, does Georgetown get into the tournament? Does Creighton still get into the tournament? A lot to unfold tomorrow. And, John, as we take a look at the College Cup and just what all entails to the College Cup team or to the tournament, it's 48 teams that are invited. There's 24 conference champions that automatically get in, but then the likes that didn't win their conference, like Creighton, they have to sit and watch the selection show tomorrow, 1 o'clock. They have to see if they're one of the 24 teams that get an at-large bid. Keep in mind, Stanford, three-time defending champion. That said, the Marquette Golden Eagles needing to win today to qualify for the NCAA tournament. So what adjustment does Louis Bennett need to be telling his team about right now in the locker room? That's a great question, John. And if I'm Louis Bennett, I look around and I say, the start we had could not have been better for the first five to eight minutes because they did a good job of pinning Georgetown back. They pressed high. Josh Cohen, I thought, was fantastic. He got in several times. Alba on the other side. Luca Perpa did a great job. We need to see more from Sunason going forward. He's been the number nine for them that hasn't really been involved as much as you like. Get Purple on the ball. Get those runs from the front three going forward. And if you can do that, you can replicate the first couple of minutes of the half, and that's when they were at their best. Brendan McDonough, the 11th minute goal is the difference here. How will the Golden Eagles respond? The second half kickoff in the BE Football Championship game is next. This is a large three-topping pizza from Domino's. You can carry one out for $7.99 every day. This is a three-topping handmade pan pizza from Domino's, and now you can also carry one out for $7.99 every day. This is a logo from Domino's, and this is the end of the commercial from Domino's. With all the top designer brands under one roof, our expert stylists have you covered from head to toe. At Men's Warehouse, select designer suits are 329 plus it's buy one, get one free on select items. This November, join Men's Warehouse and the Movember Foundation in raising awareness for men's health. Whatever your big job is, come into the Ram Black Friday sales event and get a great deal on the truck with the best resale value in the industry. And find out for yourself why more people are switching to Ram trucks than ever before. Because of all the things you've built this year, some are sweeter than others. Great deals going on all month at the Ram Black Friday sales event. Now get 1,000 Black Friday bonus cash for an average $10,000 in total values on the all-new 2019 Ram 1500. Geico makes it so easy to manage my policy. With an app that lets me pay my bill, add a vehicle, or even file a claim, it's not just easy. It's aerobics in a recliner easy. Keep 
It's not just easy, it's Geico easy. Feel the bird! So how does Marquette respond in this Big East Men's Soccer Championship game? Let's go to the source himself. Megan Caffrey has Coach Louis Bennett. Thank you, John. Coach Bennett, your team came out in the beginning of the first half, really those first five minutes, pinning Georgetown back, able to press up on them. How do you replicate that in the second half? Well, I think it's situational. If, if uh, they're going to play out, we, that'll give us a little bit of time to be able to press them and maybe uh, force some turnovers. But they do a nice job of getting out. They had a, a good balance between playing it long and then uh, and finding a free man and trying to get out. I think they were most dangerous, though, on the break. I think a lot of times that we, uh, we cause a few problems for ourselves with a missed pass and maybe maybe not playing out a little bit quicker. So. How do you assess the performance of your back line in the first half? I think they've done okay. Um, but I think they, uh, we all can be a little better, a little bit more urgency to move the ball and maybe uh, break the initial pressure and maybe get it out into our front three so they can do some damage. Thank you very much, Coach. Okay, thanks. John? What do you make of that, Jamie? Well, I think those are great questions because from what Megan's asking and what Coach Bennett is saying, he wants his team to pick and choose the moments, and when it presents itself, you have to do a good job of taking those and doing a good job of trying to find what's working, leveraging that success, getting forward when the opportunity presents itself. Team needs to do more of that. They did to start like Megan alluded to with Coach Bennett, but then they got away from it, and that's where Georgetown took the game and took the lead ultimately through Brendan McDonough. Dotson. Oh! Official saying, let's play on. And then Achara from behind with a foul. Mark Kanalesic cards Achara. And what a quick turn of events here in the opening seconds of this second half. Well, big talking point. As we take a look, Dotson steals the first one. And for me, he goes down too easy. I think that's a fantastic no call. And you can see the frustration on Char. As Dotson touch, touches inside, he starts to drag his right foot. He knows what he's going to do. Look, it's clever from the sophomore. I don't hate that. He tries to earn his team a penalty, but Mark Catalesic catches on quickly to it. And then Achara on the back of that, showing a bit of frustration, getting earning a yellow card for his tackle there. But it was just one of those moments, I think, Mark Catalesic knew what was going to happen. He was ahead of the game. Dotson tried a little bit of foolery. He goes down too easily. There was a little bit of contact, but not enough for a penalty in the final for my money. Opening seconds of the second half make a difference as well? Yeah, big big talking point. I mean, I think, look, it's I don't think that if, if it happens in the first 30 seconds or the last 30 seconds, I think Dodson knows what he's trying to do. He's trying to earn a penalty there. He knows when he touches it by the defender, any sort of contact he feels, he's just going to pull up the landing gear. But ultimately, there wasn't enough to give a penalty. The right call in the end. Connor Alba. Deflection to Nicopolitis. Good patience from Alba. He sees the overlapping run. He does a good job letting Boom, Boom get around him. Excuse me. Cuts it in on that favorite left foot. A 
That's much better from Alba. That's what they did in the first couple minutes. He got on the ball in those inside spaces, had a little bit of support from his outside back, and was able to create from there. Fantastic switch. Ellen Nealis, Big East Defensive Player of the Year. but Nealis with seven assists on the year and every Big East coach that you talk to throughout the season says when you have a right back that does as much as he does defensively and he's got seven dishes on the season it's very difficult to stop him well look, what a luxury and Dylan Nealis the Big East defender of the year has found himself getting forward time and time again here on the near side it's been a luxury to have for Brian Weiss a defender that can get forward, the junior defender does a great job of providing an extra number getting forward. Achara. Cross it back to McDonough, the goal scorer. His first of the season. What a time for it in the championship game in the 11th minute. Donna tracking Nunez. Really good job, Nunez using his body, shielding off the defender, able to turn and win a throw in deep in Georgetown's half. Samaran. Fancy footwork by Zach Wagner. Here's Segris and all Big East selection. Cohen with the service. Golden Eagles in a must-win situation for the NCAA tournament hopes. Georgetown, a top 20 RPI team. They feel comfortable about their fate no matter what happens, but would like to defend their Big East title. A dangerous ball. Oh, another opportunity as it gets fizzed across. Almost turned into an own goal. Getting the ball out wide. Great cross from Boom. And again, another moment where the ball almost gets turned in. Dylan Neal has had one at the other end. This is much like in the first half. Hearts and mouth again as that goes over and concedes a corner. Oh, on a dangerous spot, top of the box. Alan Salmer on the freshman. Just right of the cage. Oh, and as this comes out, a great ball by Purpa comes in. The ball hangs up for Salmeron. He hits it across the face of the goal, and any sort of deflection could have turned that on target. Nikolopoulos was just looking at it. He could only watch and be a spectator as that went towards his left and ultimately just goes right, but Pastorelli was there trying to throw a foot at it to try to redirect it. But again, another opportunity for Marquette. This is how the first half started. Georgetown's got to settle in. We talked about the key to the game, rely on their experience in the Big East Championship games, third one in fourth years, four years, excuse me. They need to do a better job of settling the game and settling Mar Marquette's attack right now. Yeah. Dotson was triple teamed by Golden Eagles. Georgetown will have a free kick here from about 25 out. It's the little things from the sophomore. Another.
first team all Big East selection. Does a good job getting big, backing in that last step. He starts to lean back, and then he stays upright. He keeps the ball moving, and then as the tackle comes in from Salmaran, where the ball was, Dotson had moved it away, gets his leg, and now this is the best possible outcome of that situation. One on three, he earns a free kick for Georgetown. Giants already with one assist on the day. And you can hear the Hoya Blue, a cacophony of noise behind the goal for Barraza, trying to distract him, saying everything they can to throw him off, making it hard for him to shout instructions to his defenders. Some Hoya paranoia on the hilltop on this championship Sunday. Nobody there. Zayats. Uh, you can see what he's trying to do. He's just trying to hang it up for someone to go get on the end of it, but it's a little bit too much height on it. And right now, looks like that might be that McDonough on the ground. A little bit of contact in the box. The goal score in the 11th minute. Let's take a look. A little bit of afters going on. As he gets by, he catches a little bit of a uh, hello there from Passarelli. When we talked to Louis Bennett, one of the best things he said about Passarelli is his ability to do the little things that don't always get noticed within games. The guy who's towered over you to score a goal in the 11th minute, if you're marking him, Passarelli makes sure he knows he has to do every little thing that he possibly can to make sure McDonough doesn't get on the end of another Kyle Zayat service. He does it one way or another on that one. Passarelli from Verona, Italy. The Golden Eagles tradition throughout the season is to go out for Italian right before games. And so they say Oliver Prozzarelli, he and Coach Bennett will actually taste the meatballs at each <laughs> restaurant and judge them. Uh, if the man from Verona, Italy gives it its, uh, his thumbs up, then you know what's good, right? He goes down. The official on then the play on. Wonderful defending from Leo v Leo Villa. He does enough to provide contact with Achara to throw him off. A great weight on the pass. Achara looks like he has the inside track, but Villa uses his body. He gets in between the ball. He gets in between the defender, or the forward, excuse me, Achara, and does a wonderful job of just shielding it, letting it go across. It's a little thing. That's a big play, though. trying to avoid a breaking point. Now they have some space. Patrick Segris. Game's turned in the last few minutes. Dylan Ellis kind of senses that, taking his time on the throw-in. Gets it to the big bodies of Achara and Dotson up front, but it settled down in the last few minutes after Marquette came out very hot in the second half. Purpa. Oh, he has just bolted away. Sound positioning from Nealis to break up that through ball for Purpa. football to get out of that. Six consecutive smooth passes make it seven to Dotson. Through ball towards Achara. And look, ultimately, in the end, nothing comes from it, but that's confidence from your team to play out of the back. Oh, great little touch on the near side here from Cohen. But so calm, under pressure from Georgetown. It breaks the pressure, and they're able to change the field, get 80 yards further up the field just by staying calm under pressure with plenty of Marquette attackers around pressing. This is why they are the defending Big East champs and have been to the final three years out of four. Outside backs, playing, moving, midfielders, being in the right spot, finding a forward, playing a ball down the line, breaking that pressure. That is great soccer. Brian Weiss has his team flying right now, feeling confident, as they should, relying on their championship experience, which we said, John, was one of the keys to the game for Georgetown. 
Georgetown athletic director Lee Reed says that he's got the best men's soccer coach in America. Brian Weiss looking for a third Big East tournament title in the last four years. The results, they confirmed that in a lot of ways in this conference in the past couple of years. Well, he certainly struck gold with this recruiting class and with the likes of Dodson as a sophomore. Neil is still a junior. Look at the goalkeeping. Nicolopoulos, I mean, that's obviously a freshman that you can build a program on. Going today for win number 150 in his career. What a big moment that would be for Brian Weiss, and he's going to to rely a lot on that man right there. Giannis Nicolopoulos in goal, who's so far answered every question that's been asked of him this game. Nine goals on the year. Georgetown six and one this season when leading at the half. Marquette trying to be the underdog here again today. You can't just wander into people's apartments. He brought the freshman to the apartment. Segrist. Cohen yeah. has been down this left side all afternoon. And the Hoyas defending him. It's a goal kick. Good defending from Nealis. Doesn't bite on the fake. A little bit of contact. Not enough for a foul. Shields it out for a goal kick. We talked about this coming over to the field today. Nealis just quietly goes about his business. And what you expect from somebody that is the Big East defender of the year, it's not about flash. He goes about it consistently. He's one of the first names on the team sheet for Brian Weiss every single week, and, and you can see why he does the little things right. He's exactly what you want from somebody who's going to be on the ball quite a bit in the game, confident on it, calm, reads the game well, a player that certainly has eyes for the next level, as do several people on the field here. And he was just on there and got looked off. He had the foot race where he beat Josh Cohn back and Seagrass was kind of a little bit higher up. And when Nealis was on. Nealis ready for that home run ball. Stepping in. Catherine. Right on cue, John. They just look like geniuses for once. Normally it's the jinx. Not on Championship Sunday in the Big East. Glad that you're with us on FS2. Samaran playing it out wide. Cross and a Golden Eagles corner kick. substitution says a lot as soon as someone comes back in he started the game he started the second half on the bench maybe louis bennett thought a little something different a different look that wasn't presented to start the game but soon as someone now has a chance to come back in with 30 minutes left to assert himself on today's game luca purpa oh he's looking to create a turnover and they do Georgetown seeking some cushion. Bum was prepared for it. Great cover from Marquette. Patient, don't dive in. Do a good job of standing your ground and picking that moment. When the pass goes a little bit too far, Boom was all over it. He clears it out, does a fantastic job. Matt Letter coming back into the game for Georgetown. He had a lot of success in the first half. Did a very good job of getting forward. We'll see if he can continue that more on. Megan, what do you have? Well, John, if this score were to hold true the remainder of the game, Georgetown would be looking to make themselves the soccer dynasty in the Big East, if you will. They would be the first school to go back-to-back -back men's and women's tournament sweeps. The women already won the, the Big East tournament and are on to their NCAA tournament. So if the score holds true, we, we'll see if we have some history here. 
Incredible stat, Megan. I love that. It just shows the dominance here at Georgetown, both on the men's and the women's side. The women just playing the final here. That was a big question coming in. Having the women play before on a night when it was very wet, it was windy. What was the field going to be like? What was the conditions? Today we couldn't have a more picture-perfect day for this men's Big East final. The women winning their NCAA tournament first round game over Central Connecticut yesterday, 3-1, right here at Shaw Field. And they're a one seed. They will host throughout up until the College Cup. Segris and Cohen on this near side. Those two work very well in time together. Segris fighting for positioning and a whistle on him. Segris for me has done a very good job. And look, he's got all his, his first team, all Big East recognition. He did a fantastic job throughout the regular season. But he's done a very good job today of getting forward doing a good job when called upon of getting forward that left-footed a combination with Josh Cohen on the near side. Those two do a really good job of understanding each other and that's what makes an outside back and an outside midfielder partnership so important is understanding when one does something, the other goes here and vice versa. Riley Strassner, the junior comes in for Derek Dotson. Brian Weiss will take off Dotson for some time because he knows he may need him in just a bit. And again, in college soccer, like Dotson just now, you start the half, you come off, you can come back in in the second half. So look for Dotson to maybe get some instruction on the near side. We'll see if Megan can come, kind of hear what Coach Weiss' instructions is for him because he certainly will have an impact at some point through this game. Marquette searching for more magic. A strike. This one's high and long. In good spot, just not the right execution as the ball gets cut in on the left side. And Marquette is doing everything to get in the right spot, but ultimately it's been the final ball. It's been the final product. The shots haven't been on target. They haven't done a good enough job. Nicopolitis hasn't really had to make any extraordinary saves yet. They're not asking enough tough questions of them by putting shots on target. So in the final 25 minutes of change here, regulation. How does Marquette's approach change, knowing that they have to win this one if they want to keep playing? Well, I think right now you see it. You see Segrist on the near side getting really high, getting forward. On the other side, you're going to want that from Boom as well. You're going to have to take more calculated risk. At certain times, you've got to get more numbers forward, win these tackles, and do a good job of converting on your counters like we see right now. Purple with space. Connor Alba. What a move. Back to Purple. Left of the net, but did send Nicopolitis diving to his right. Ultimately, Alba gets the shot off, but it's such good defending from the Georgetown defense. Puts a little one through his legs. Purple can't get the shot off on his left foot. It keeps getting closed down. Alba as well. Everyone's closing down. He ultimately rushes it with three guys around. But that's not a comfortable shot, John. He's reaching for it. The ball's way out in front of him. He's stretching for it because the Georgetown defenders know, and they've done their homework. They studied when it gets on the left foot of Alba, when it gets on the left, left foot of Purple, close them down to not give them enough space to get a shot off. Let's go back down to Megan. Guys, actually, head coach Brian Reese was a little bit upset about his defending, his team's defending there. He shelled, yelled out to his team, hey, what are you guys doing there? He was looking for them to be a little bit more tighter on there. John? A bullet. Nicopolitis in the perfect spot off the foot of Wagner. Safe hands from the goalkeeper there, but Megan, to that point, I mean, I, that's so great. That's why we have you on the sideline, because you can tell 
when we heard at halftime from Brian Weiss when he spoke to Megan Caffrey, he basically said there were moments that we were the second best team in this game. And it seems like he's echoing that from his team's defensive shape right now. You can hear what he's saying on the sideline through the ears of Megan down there. And it's really important to know that because he's not content. He's not happy with the way his team's playing. Look, he'll be happy if the result holds. But right now, he doesn't feel that it's enough from his team to be able to maintain this 1-0 lead. He would prefer to not go to overtime against these Marquette Golden Eagles. You think he wants to go to penalties, John? 21 <laughs> rounds in the first two games, seven of them of which in Creighton were ones that were must-make or the game would have been over. <laughs> said that on the conference call to us when we spoke to Brian Weiss this week. Certainly does not want anything to do with penalties against this Marquette Golden Eagle side. Louis Bennett's fine with it. He packed the Advil. Yeah, he okay. He'd be fine. No problem. He still got the hair after 21 rounds of PKs. Hasn't it been fun to see this Marquette team on a magical run and now trying to find the equalizer. It's Purpa. A floater. Far post. He's still in a dangerous spot. Nicopolitis. It's a whistle blown. Just be a goal kick. Wonderful work by our camera crew and the microphone crew to pick up the little things that are being said. Hey, you can't use your mouth. That means there's no communication right now. You have to be able to say, clear away head this way for a corner that's right back in a dangerous spot and to be quite honest it's only a very little bit of contact from Connor Alba that's in Giannis Nicopolitas to the ground but he loses the ball and it ends up in the back of the net now Mark Catalistic calls the foul there but again that's not good enough defensively from Georgetown and it's just simple communication of letting somebody know clear it away concede a corner it wasn't there on that play Achara what a run physicality from Riley Strassner. That's what you want an impact from the sub. Coming in, doing a good job, keeping the level high. I'm in a char right now. We're giving Marquette all sorts of problems up top. Georgetown scoring in the 11th minute. Kyle Zients off the corner. Brendan McDonough, the senior, scoring his first goal of the season. 140 does in the Hoya back line. Coming up huge in this title game. Now a turnover to Achara. Barraza's off his line. And a smart foul. Very, very smart foul. Salmaron does a good job because, John, as you mentioned, we're in the booth screaming Barraza's off his line. I mean, we're literally going... If Achar gets a half a foot of space, he's going to shoot that from this spot. If he would have taken his head up, instead of looking out wide, he would have seen Luis Barraza 20 yards off of his line in a position where Achar could comfortably try to chip that and make it on target from there. Sal Moron takes the peek over his shoulder, sees that he needs to commit the foul, and he does. That's a smart, professional, tactical foul to give that away. A little intangible from your center midfielder, knowing that this could stop a goal. If he doesn't make that challenge there, Achar, I think, has an effort from 40 yards out. Achar tying his shoes. Barraza directing traffic as always. Neon Green jersey's fitting for that. Big East goalkeeper of the year trying to keep this deficit at one. A sunny day here on the hilltop. And a whistle on the Hoyas. Spotted off the ball by Mark, by referee Mark Catalytic does a very good job of seeing that. It's been physical, it's been intense. And for me, as we take a moment here, this is now to the 20 minute left mark of the game. What is Marquette going to do to change the game? What's the chess match between Louis Bennett of Marquette and Brian Weiss of Georgetown? What changes are they going to make to try to impact the final 20 minutes? Jacob Montez.
the seventh goal for Achara, and the Hoyas get the cushion they've been looking for. He sends Shawfield into a frenzy. Wonderful ball through by Montez, and it's lucky, it's opportunistic as it takes a bounce off boom. Chara calmly decides to open his hips, pass it into the corner. He doesn't take a second touch, makes no mistake about it. Barraza can do nothing more to that. Achara realizes just what it means to give his team the 2-0 lead just under 20 minutes. It's opportunistic. It's wonderful timing of Achara to be in the right spot, make the right decision, doesn't go for power, goes for placement. His seventh goal of the season. It's a standing ovation for the fans as he leaves the field now, gets a word of vote of, of confidence from Brian Weiss, realizing just how important that was. And we talked about with just under 20 minutes left in this game, what's going to happen. And right at that 20-minute mark, Achara answers that question, gives them a crucial two-goal lead here at home. The Hoya fans can now sense it. A 2-0 lead for this Georgetown team with 20 minutes to play in regulation. What an incredible turn of events, but Jacob Montez needs so much credit for that. As he started to drive on, he played the ball through. Lagum did a good job of intercepting the pass that was meant for Lochner, I believe. But when he takes his touch, it just finds its way to Achara in the box, and he makes no mistake about it. That's one of the big things about the junior from Nigeria, that he just puts himself in the right position. Sometimes he battles for it. Sometimes he uses his wits about him to be able to be in the box and find the right pass to pick out, right finish to place. And you can see the two players there. They did a great job combining on that goal. Send it back down to Megan. And you could tell, guys, after that goal, Brian Weiss really happy with his team's performance. Even telling them, force Marquette to do more work. He wants to see more from his team. John? All of that Hoya pressure moments before the Achara goal. It was a foreshadowing for Brian Weiss and his team to make it 2-0. And now they can taste it. 18 and change away from going back to back. It's a lot of adversity for Marquette, who faced plenty of it in this Big East tournament. They're going to have to find an answer quickly. They're going to need the likes of Luca Perpa to get on the ball a bit more. Seegers and Cohn over here have combined to get forward to try to create something on this near side. But enough right now of, of just not doing it. There's not enough, excuse me, John, of getting the ball forward. You've got Sunason on the field. Does Diego Nunez find his way back on the field? for another forward. They like to play a 4-2-3-1. Do they change and go to maybe a 4-3-3? That's the questions right now Louis Bennett will be asking of himself and of his staff. What can you do if you're Marquette? We'll continue to press, pick the right pass out at the right time. No cheap turnovers. You're going to have to get more numbers forward. You're going to have to do a better job of getting possession in dangerous spots because right now they're pinned back in their own half. This is the moment where you've got to get several players on. Because right now they're two, three on, five or six for Georgetown. That simply isn't good enough. Seagrass. Colin looking to shift the field. Oh, it's unfortunate because if that pass gets right on if it's placed right on the foot they can create a two on one on that side and that's better it would have been a difficult task to try to defend for Sean O'Hearn if that ball would have been controlled instead it goes between two Marquette attackers and the ball goes out harmlessly for throwing Ways have a quick throw Dotson it's on sides was double team and for now Golden Eagles holding things here trying to find a way to cut this in half to give them a chance. And it is Nunez, it is Sunason up top. Josh Cohen's going to look to get involved a little bit more. Purple involved. Alba, look, I mean, it's not for lack of talent. That's a very good front five. 
right now they're just not getting it with enough numbers around the ball. And every time they pick their head up, there's two and three Hoya defenders in their way right now. Georgetown shape defensively has made it very hard for them to be broken down. We want Daniel. We want Daniel. <laughs> this Georgetown team has lost just once since September 25th. Unbeaten in eight of nine. And unbeaten at Shaw Field in that stretch. It's better for Marquette. They need to get more numbers for it as they break the initial pressure from Georgetown. Get numbers for it, pick out the right pass. Honor Alba had to take it from him. Great defending from Georgetown to recover and just win that back. And calmly again, breaking pressure, getting Dylan Illis higher up. And he wins the throw in deep, deep in Marquette's half. That's where they've been the better team so far, is they've done a good job of recovering defensively, getting in the right spot, and then they're able to break pressure, get numbers forward. Dylan Neal is down right now, holding his right knee. This will be interesting to see if he's able to, to push through this because he's been instrumental right now, both defensively and attacking-wise for Georgetown. Take another look at it here. It's the right knee we're keeping an eye on. Knee-to-knee -knee contact. Oh, that's a, that's a tough one, John. I can tell you from experience, as he goes flying in, nothing malicious. Just two players, Leo Villa, hard nose, Dylan Nealis going in. We hope he's okay, but that doesn't, that doesn't feel great. No, and that knee has been an issue throughout the season. Post up, post up, post up. He did not start against Creighton in the regular season finale, Rio Hope Gunn did, and it was still a Georgetown 2-1 win. So next man up mentality for this Hoyas team, but that knee will be something to watch throughout the NCAA tournament for the Hoyas. As they have the 2-0 lead, already felt good about themselves and that large opportunity. Regardless, Marquette needing a win to dance in the tournament. And in the Big East, Creighton will be sitting Waiting with bated breath tomorrow. Selection show in the afternoon. Really calm header from Nealis. Does a good job understanding. He's got to head that down and away from where the forward is. Keep it inside the 18. So Nicopolitas can come out and grab the ball. It's just little things like that is why he was the biggest defender of the year. His IQ, his understanding of the game and what to do in that situation. It's hard to teach that. That's just a lot of soccer smarts, and that's what Dylan Nealis has. What are you more impressed by today, Georgetown's offense or the defense? I think their shape defensively has been really good. I know we've heard several times from Megan Capper saying Brian Weiss hasn't been thrilled defensively, but they've been in the right positions time and time again. Seekers was rejected. We'll have the throw. Grant Owens coming back on for the Golden Eagles. Mm -hmm. Good look at the 2018 Big East Defender of the Year, Dylan Illis, only a junior. He did a great job this season, constantly being a steady force at right back. As you mentioned, John, earlier, seven assists on the season, providing an extra number going forward, but defensively, Georgetown was very stout. They gave away very few opportunities throughout the year. As you know, you know all things Big East, John. You can attest to how good Lewis has been for this team. Uh, quote, St. John's head coach, Dr. Dave Mazers. Here's a strike from distance. Nicolitas is there, coming off the foot of Bum. The legend, Dr. Dave Mazur at St. John said, Dylan Nealis has given me restless nights, and he's going to do it for another year. He said the luxury of having a right back that has seven assists as well, goodness. I mean, that's, a, that's an incredible stat to have in 18 games played. Those are good numbers for anybody. Outside back, those are exceptional numbers, assist-wise. Huh? Banged away. Kind of trying to get back in this one. Passarelli not uh, happy with that call. And I can see his frustration a little bit. Both players, Dotson and Passarelli, doing a good job. Flying back, trying to make a challenge. Both of their momentum was going to carry him past the ball. 
Mark Catalytic thought he gave too much of a nudge to throw Dotson off. Maybe he thought Dotson had the spot first and Passarelli threw him off balance too much, but this is where Georgetown will start to slow the game down, take their time, kill off the last 11 and a half minutes of this game. Yet the point is still pushing forward and winning out on a corner. Microcosm of the day right there. Boom, does a great tackle to win it. Yet as he's on the ground, the ball hits him and trickles out to give more time ticking off. Look, he's in the right spot. He goes in, makes a tackle, and as it's on the ground, it just, well, does it hit him? Does he have a case? I don't know. The decision was made, corner kick, and it's more precious time. We'll take off the clock. Have you seen fatigue set in for a team that's played 220 minutes, 21 rounds of PKs to get here? That's a great point, John. I think so. I think you've seen that in the sense that they can't seem to, for Marquette, they can't seem to get very many numbers forward right now. It's a lot to ask. Two games that go to two overtimes and penalties, both physically and mentally draining contests, and then you've got to come into a difficult place to play. You went down early in the 11th minute, you've been chasing the game, and you start to see it's been difficult for Marquette to get those numbers forward needed to go and chase the game to get an equalizer or to get themselves back in the game now. Science again, and Ross is there. Georgetown Edson Martinez has been brought into the game and I think he's done a good job of just simplifying the midfield being in the right spots so looking over his shoulder He's in a good spot now as that ball gets played into the corner But he's just here to kill off the game and to really clog the midfield up at this point and That's a smart sub by Brian Weiss because you know right now the clock is your friend You want it to tick down you want players that are going to slow the pace of the game now And that's what Edson Martinez can do for you Martin Alba coming on for Zach Wagner. You being a former North Carolina Tar Heel, you know the grind of the summer leads to fall. And this men's college soccer season, it really happens in a flash in a way. Things can turn so quickly for both these teams, it did for the good. Yeah, and I think right now it's about finding the right form. You mentioned earlier, you said Georgetown was on an incredible run right now where they've been just fantastic. They've been stellar as of late. And they're starting to peak at the right time as they get into the tournament, as they get to the Big East Championship game. They've looked stronger as the game's gone on. Now they'll carry that into the tournament if this result holds. But you mentioned earlier just how good they've been as of late. That's indicative of how this team has started to go from strength to strength as the years worn on. O'Hearn raced up to punch it back. Belongs to the Hoyas. Sinasan frustrated. He's just a freshman. A native of Sweden and has a great career ahead of him. Purpa. Five goals in his last seven matches. It's going to get going from Arquette. He's been the guy for them. Uh, foul by Seeger says he's late to the ball. He's got to know that's not the spot to go in and leave his shoulder late. You've got everyone pressed in. Georgetown's frantically trying to clear any ball, trying to just flick any header on, and he overcommits. He leaves his shoulder in. He's never going to get to the first one. 
A little bit of frustration mixed in, but you saw his teammate win the second ball there. He's got to know to pull out in that moment. That's not a spot where you can concede a free kick with just under seven minutes left. Goals in the 11th, 70th minutes. Brendan McDonough with his first of the season in the 11th. Off a corner from Zayat and Achara. Adding insurance in the 70th off a turnover. Achara waiting to check back in now. Zayat feeds it in. Barraza keeping it from three. Great job of Tony from the mistake that he made on the poor clearance where he slipped and fell. But Barraza does a good job getting across Derek Dodson. Doesn't allow the sophomore forward to get in front of him in what would have been a tap-in. Very similar to how he scored last year here in the final. Beautiful ball. Georgetown just able to stop that one, but nonetheless, a home run ball as we take another look. Well, Zayat's playing this ball across. He's got Dodson, but Dodson can't get to the right side of the goalkeeper. He can't flash across goal in front of him. Barasa does a great job of coming out, reading the play. And then on the other end, Marquette had the opportunity to try to go forward, to try to get a bouncing ball. It could just never quite sit up to, the where, to where the forward could get a volley on it. Could try to put his foot through it or up and over Nikolopoulos uh, as well. It's just just kind of how the day's gone for Marquette attacking-wise. Nicopolitis, excuse me. Lochner sizing up his defender. Zawatsky. Smart from the sophomore to come waste some time over in the corner. Dotson with keep away, and now a smooth move. That was good. the poise and control of this Georgetown team. It's game awareness. What a smart decision to just put your foot on the ball, go to the corner, fight to win it back. Georgetown is showing why this was a key to the game for them, John. At the very beginning, we said, what is the key for Georgetown? Rely on your championship experience. Three times being in the Big East final in four years and they are showing their poise when it counts the most on the season. That was Coach Bennett's biggest concern for Marquette heading into this one. A team that has played 220 minutes, 21 rounds of PKs, potentially getting stretched out by the Hoyas. Yeah, and in the right moments, the Hoyas have made a good decision to keep the ball, to press when needed, try to go long when needed. Very seldom have they made the wrong decision tonight. And you've started to see that indicative in the scoreline of how the final few minutes of this game have played out. It's winding down. What makes this Georgetown team dangerous for an NCAA tournament run? Great question. I think their poise. I think their ability to not let the moment be bigger than them. They've done really well in this final. It hasn't been a perfect performance by any stretch of the imagination, but I think they've done a good job of winning the moments when the moment presented itself. A saying that Brian Weiss said to us on the call when we spoke to him, John, and I think those are the type of things that can be the little intangibles that can have you succeed in the NCAA tournament. Jamie Watson, my partner. Megan Caffrey doing a great job down on the sidelines for us all afternoon. John Fanta with you here on FS2. The clock just ticks, tick, 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 tick. After this, foul on Achara. Does a great job of just understanding that's one of the most important things he can do at this moment. Win a foul for his team 100 yards from their own goal and they come and keep it in the corner with the sophomore teammate, Derek Dotson. It can't get taken for granted, but how difficult is it to play keep away here? Well, very difficult, because obviously Marquette's in a, in a panic, frantic state of mind to try to win the ball back. But this is composure. This is understanding the game and, and what needs to be done. And it's a professional way to see the game out. <laughs> Easy, easy. 
Zawanski. Georgetown given these fans at Shawfield today that have turned out in big numbers a performance to be proud of. The Hoya Blue behind the goal. They played their part. It's been loud. It's been energetic. This game's been played in the right spirit. A game worthy of being a final. Two teams worthy of being in the final. And ultimately, in the end, Georgetown took the opportunity and they presented itself. Achara saved by Barraza. Just over a minute left. And if you're Marquette, you have to be proud of what you accomplished in this season, and in this tournament in particular. Look, it wasn't a perfect season. 7-8-3 on the year. They would have liked to have obviously had more wins and losses, but ultimately they made their way to the final. Edson Martinez. And if a few of those chances to start the game find themselves on target and maybe they get the game's first goal, we could be talking in a whole different tune right now of how the game ended up. But ultimately, they weren't able to find the game's first goal. They weren't able to find the goal at all. Georgetown did. And for me, John, that's been the difference. Taking the moments, winning the moments when the moments present itself. As the atmosphere in Shaw Field, they can sense this would be back-to-back -back champions again for both the men's program and the women's program. As Megan said earlier, creating a dynasty here on the Georgetown campus for the Hoyas. Seconds winding down. It's a double dose of Hoyas in Big East men's soccer. Georgetown repeats as the BE football tournament champions. And that's the end of the game. The final score of today's game is Georgetown team with that zero. Congratulations to the Hoyas for winning the Big East championship in the NFL. And just look what it means to the Hoyas. Coach Brian Weiss gets his team back to the Big East final again on home soil. They do an incredible job of seeing the game out. What a performance from Georgetown. Goals when they matter the most. 11th minute through McDonough. Achara gets the game second goal with just over 20 minutes left. And that's the moment you dream of. But the celebration began on the hilltop. Georgetown. Three out of the last four Big East men's soccer titles. A dynasty run for this senior class. Three out of four Big East championships is something any program anywhere across the country, men or women, would be proud of. Georgetown have established themselves as the kings of the Big East, the back-to-back -back champions. They've done it again today. They did what they needed to do. They beat a very good team. The goalkeeper of the year, Luis Barraza, they were able to beat him twice. They did what it took on the day to beat a resilient team in Marquette that just wouldn't go away throughout the tournament. Definition of a survive in advance until they met Georgetown on their home soil. Our Megan Caffrey will have the champions after this. Georgetown, back to back in BE football. The Hoyas have started the celebration on the hilltop. This is a large three-topping pizza from Domino's. You can carry one out for $7.99 every day. This is a three-topping handmade pan pizza from Domino's, and now you can also carry one out for $7.99 every day. This is a logo from Domino's, and this is the end of the commercial from Domino's. You don't need to know what torque means, but a test drive will show you how it feels. The Volkswagen Drive to Decide event. Get a Volkswagen with America's best six-year, 72,000-mile limited warranty. Get a $1,000 bonus on select 2019 Jetta and 2018 Tiguan and Atlas 2.0T models. When you show up to a holiday party with a great-tasting, less-filling light beer, you might need to find a backup fridge. Happy Holidays from Miller Lite. 
Today's Best Western rewards you in a flash. Get a free night fast with points that never expire at over 4,200 hotels worldwide. And get double rewards points on every stay. Book now at bestwestern.com. Our military roots run deep. Lowe started when two GIs returned from World War II. And after serving their country, serving their community came naturally. More than 75 years later, in 2018, Lowe's will proudly contribute nearly $1 billion to military families all over the United States with our everyday military discount. From our thousands of Red Vest veterans and the entire Lowe's family, we thank you for serving. Nothing outlasts Energizer Ultimate Lithium. Hey, you can't do that. Can can he do that? Uh, yeah, he's good. <clears throat> Energizer Ultimate Lithium. It's the number one longest lasting battery. is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. The Georgetown Hoyas have won back-to-back -back Big East men's soccer tournament titles in three on the last four. And of all people, it's a senior who delivers the game-winning goal in this one, the first of the season for him. Megan Caffrey is with the Hoyas' Brendan McDonough. Thank you, John. Brendan, John just said it. This was your first goal of the season in the Big East Championship. It was off the corner. You headed it in. What did you see on that play that allowed you to head it in? Uh, they weren't as tight as they maybe we've seen in the past on film so the, um, that middle of the zone spot is something that we knew we could exploit uh, just try to follow the ball and finally get my head on it. it's been a long time coming but it, it feels good now I saw a coach hug you right before you got your shirt and what do you say to you in that little embrace just three out of four I mean it's a really great accomplishment this conference is so tough and to win the tournament three out of four years it's, it speaks to how great a coach he is and how good the, the group is uh, we feel good right now and it was just it was an emotional time but yeah we feel good right now three out of four back-to-back -back Big East champions how can how has your team been able to be so consistent uh, it's just clicking at the right times you, you go through tough spots every team does throughout the year and, and if you can find that consistency at the end of the year to to go to the Big East tournament and then into the NCAA tournament that's when you want to be clicking and so right now we feel really good and and we've done it three out of, this, out of these four years, so it's, it seems to be going well for us. Brendan, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. John? The most decorated senior class in Georgetown men's soccer history. Looking at some of them there with the rest of their teammates as the Hoyas get the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. They will be one of 48. Well, they're dancing and they're singing. Thanks to Brendan McDonough. We saw it a moment ago. We heard from the senior captain. He got up big in the 11th minute. A great start to the game. And look, Marquette had their opportunities, but it was almost and it was nearly and it was not quite all evening long. They were never able to get that one killer opportunity Opportunity. Everything they threw at the goal, Nicopolitas was up to the task. They were able to stifle the likes of Connor Alba, Luca Perpa, and then with le over just over 20 minutes left, Achara finds himself opportunistically in the box. He opens his hips up. He passes into the corner in front of the Hoya Blue. He sends Shawfield into absolute raptures. As we mentioned it, three out of four back-to-back -back championships for the Georgetown Hoyas in a game that they were dominant in.
The Golden Eagles had no shortage of opportunities, a special season and a postseason run for them. So take nothing away from Louis Bennett and his side and what they were able to accomplish. They can be proud of themselves. They were the epitome of survive in advance. They went into Creighton in the semifinal, a difficult place to play. They got the results to get them here today. They gave a good account for themselves. Ultimately, in the end, Georgetown Hoyas at home in a Big East Conference final. You would never bet against them. And today, they were a good bet for your money as they won 2-0 comfortably. A great performance from Georgetown. Fun to be with you this afternoon, partner. Enjoyed it, John. The Big East has a powerhouse in men's soccer, and its name is the Georgetown Hoyas. The goals in the 11th and the 70th. Brendan McDonough, the senior, his third Big East title in his four-year career. And the Hoyas aren't done yet. They'll dance on to the NCAA tournament after this championship victory.